Good morning once again, members of the media. Welcome to our press conference. I'm joined by Super Sports United Head Coach uh, Kaitano Tembo. Coach, uh, coming back from a point away from home, leading to another big match against Orlando Pires. Can you just share your thoughts on the upcoming game? Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, look, uh, it was a, quite a difficult game against Kaiser Chiefs. I thought uh, we didn't play well, especially in the first half. Uh, they dominated possession. I think they 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 were a little bit more adventurous. Uh, they created the better chances. Uh, but second half, I think we were much better. Uh, we played a little bit more with purpose. You know, in terms of going forward, we had the ball a little bit more. We kept the ball for longer periods, uh, especially when we brought in uh, Kabuza. It brought, gave us a little bit of you know you no know, options. But uh, I still feel that. Uh, we would like, you know, to get away with the draw, which is, a, you know, a result we can take, uh, considering that we're playing also away from home, and we have now collected about four points from Chiefs, you know, this season. So it was quite a good result, you know, you know, considering the balance of playing. Uh, well, coming into the next game against Pirates, uh, another tough game. You know, we've had only about two days as well, uh, two, three days to, to prepare. Uh, not enough rest, you know, just, you know, giving players a little bit, you know, of, you know, time to recover. Can't really train much, you know, because we need them to be fresh, you know, against a very good team, you know, like Pirates. So, also they rested most of their players, you know, in, the, in their game against uh, Juanin Galaxy. So, they want to have, you know, you know, fresh players, you know, on the day. So we we'll really need to prepare well and pitch because we are playing at home. Uh, members of the media, I'll give you the opportunity to ask our head coach some questions. Just raise your hand, please, so I can identify you. Any questions? Okay, Cabello, Carabo, you can go, and then Rob. Karabo, you can go. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you, you can go. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, coach. Morning, Karabo. Uh, uh, coach, I just wanted to find out with the situation over the weekend, uh, when you pulled off, uh, 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 what, what? Uh, Lucky Mohomi. Lucky Mohomi, sorry. Yes, Lucky Mohomi. Uh, coach, so, is it is it did you did you after post match did you put an arm around his shoulder and explain the situation as to why you pulled up, pulled him off in the first half or was it just a case of blessing with both professionals? Let's move on with it. Thank you. Yeah, look, uh, uh, I explained it to him. Yeah, it was a tactical decision. I think uh, Lucky has also played, you know, uh, a lot of games in a very short space of time. And I could see that he was a little bit, you know, heavy, uh, not the usual lucky. And uh, uh, it was just, you know, a tactical decision to try and, you know, bring a little bit of freshness in our attack as well as in our midfield because they were really dominating in midfield. So when we took him off and brought in Jamie uh, uh, a bit more inside and brought, you know, Kuda so that we can have speed going forward. And that's when we started, you know, you know, getting, you know, the ball a little bit much better, and also giving them a little more problems, you know, you know, offensively. Uh, so he, he understood, you know, because I think we we also tried, you know, to manage him uh, in terms of you know game time because he's someone who hasn't played, you know, for for a very long time. So this could have been a little bit too much too soon for him. So that's why we pulled him out. Okay, we're going to go in the following order. It's Rob, uh, Tisetso, Clifford, and then Fidel. Uh, Rob, you can go ahead. Coach, uh, Rob Delford in Cape Town. Hope you're well. Uh, Hi, Rob. Coach, just your, gen uh, coach, uh, just your general assessment of the first half of the season of Super Sports. Uh, look, uh, in terms of where we wanted to be, uh, I think we are two, three points short because. Uh, uh, we always want to, you know, get, you know, two points per game. 
So halfway, Mark, we played about 17 games, so we should be probably 36 points. But we are on 32, so we we we, we four points short. Uh, but overall, I think uh, we've done well. We've done better than last season. There is quite you know an improvement from last season, uh, though there's still a lot of football to play. Uh, uh, the second round is gonna be a little bit more tougher because you know uh, uh, teams are looking. You know, they put all different ambitions, you know, teams want to avoid delegation, the others want to get into the top eight, others want to win the league, top four. So games are going to be a little bit more difficult. So we just have to be, uh, be, be ready. And I think for us, we've done well considering the amount of uh, injuries which we've had to our most you know, influential players like Teboho, uh, Evans. Uh, Julie Manziva, uh, Ikram Reynas, uh, Onismo Basera, all those players haven't played much you know, for us, but they are you know, slowly coming back to full fitness. And uh, hopefully, I think second round we will have a more balanced you know, team. Is that all? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone and good morning, coach. Uh, morning coach, talking you. about, uh, just to add on Rob's uh, question. Uh, talking about the first round of, of, of the first uh, of, of the season, you saying you are about two or three points uh, uh, short of one, where you would have wanted to be. Uh, uh, coach, I mean, over the years, uh, what are the lessons that you have learned? Because Super Sport has been number one neck, sort of, with the leaders in the past few seasons, but only to finish, you know, outside the top two at the end of the season. What are the lessons that you have learned over the years, you know, in terms of uh, the title chase at this stage of the season to last the distance so that you end up top or maybe number two? Well, uh, quite a good question. I think, uh, you know, for me, since I took over, uh, if I look at the team, I think the team has changed from the team which I inherited. We, we have lost, you know, a lot of big name players. Uh, and recently, I think this season we also lost Dean Fehman, we lost uh, uh, Aubrey Modiba, uh, Tabu Myamane, Clayton Daniels. Uh, and the team has you know, really given an opportunity to some young players uh, who have you know, really raised their hands. And the team has always stayed competitive, uh, irrespective of, you know, our circumstances but we've stayed competitive and you know this time of the season to be where we are uh, it should be a, a, a little bit of you know an achievement because it's like a rebuilding process as well because if you look, lose you know top your top players you are ten, you tend to you know start rebuild again and that's what we've been doing uh, but still staying competitive so there is been uh, quite an improvement, but we've lacked, you know, consistency in crucial, you know, areas, crucial, you know, matches. Uh, I take for example, you know, the game against Celtics and the game against, you know, Chiefs. We need to try and, you know, carry that momentum and put a little bit more pressure to the, you know, top team like, you know, Sundowns, uh, and try and close the gap. And I think we have not done that, especially in the previous seasons as well, where we were four points behind and we needed to win a game and decide that we lose or we draw. And losing points at you know, crucial moments, I think that has been a, you know, a, a huge disadvantage for us. But this season has been a little bit better. Uh, we've you know, lost you know, less games and we've drawn less games from the previous season, so there is an improvement. But I would want us to be a little bit more consistent in terms of winning matches. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Good morning, Coach. Uh, morning. Coach, just two questions. How important is, you know, Bongani Kumale at the back? Uh, I remember that some time ago we did talk about how, you know, the youngsters at the back are, are coming all right and they're learning so much from, you know, experienced players. You know, you had uh, the likes of uh, 
Clinton Daniels before and, and now Mungani is also settling in very well and the, you know Tate Owen is also playing very well. Most of the defenders at the back they are taking you know uh, they're following the leadership of this you know uh, 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 old players and also just to look at at, at you know Sipombule I feel like you know in most games he gets in a lot of great positions but he tends to pass the ball more than you know taking a chance just to shoot do you think it's something where he's lacking a little bit of confidence going forward? Yeah, look, uh, uh, starting with uh, Sipumbule, uh, I think there has been uh, a little bit of an improvement in terms of his creativity, in terms of his you know, effectiveness in matches. Uh, we all know that you know, you know, Sipo is one of the you know, most skillful players in the league. Uh, and I think before he used to just focus on that on being you know skillful but not being effective. Uh, when we talk about effectiveness, we're talking about him creating you know opportunities and scoring goals. Uh, this season, I think he's always already had about five assists uh, from midfield, and as well as you know he scored three goals, I think so. So there is quite an improvement, and we want him to be able to use his skill. You know to win as matches and he's getting there and sometimes you don't really wanna you know destroy uh, the way he plays but you can only try and improve it and make him a little bit more of a complete player and use his skill to win as matches and i think he has done that he's trying to do that and there's still a lot you know you know to come from him uh, because it's quite important to us uh, coming to uh, Bongs, Bongs, uh, I think he uh, is won three league titles with, uh, with Super Sport United. Uh, he's played in Europe, played for Tottenham, he's played in the World Cup uh, in 2010. So you can see the amount of experience he has, and uh, he can be a, a good role model, you know, to to the younger players, uh, both on and off the pitch, because he's. Uh, he's, a, he's a, a true professional. He's a typical Super Sport United player, uh, and I think our youngsters are very lucky to have someone like him, you know, around that they can, you know, learn from, and as well as you know, share ideas because uh, youngsters need that. They need role models like that, and Bongs has done that. And whenever he is one player who understands that he's not going to be able to play each and every game. Uh, but he's always willing, you know, to give his advice, you know, to the young players and support them. And whenever he's called upon to come and do the job, he's always come in and, you know, and, 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 and done it. So um, we are quite happy to have him, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the team. You know, sometimes before he, he can even play a game, he comes in when we want to close games, uh, we bring him in with five, ten minutes, he's always focused. And players like Luke Flores, you know, should count themselves very lucky that they can learn from a professional like, uh, you know, look like uh, Bongani. And they've got to take it very seriously because it's, 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 it's quite a huge, you know, learning curve for them. Uh, Fidel? Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, coach, can you please elaborate? On the revival of uh, events for Siki. Before he came, before he came back, we hadn't seen him for for a while. What changed in his game, which you deemed necessary to to play him again? And also, now that you are out of the Netbank Cup, and uh, the, the only thing left is the league. If you don't get the league, are you also hoping to maybe get a Cap Champions League spot or a Cap Confederation uh, spot? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, look, Fidel, I think uh, with the uh, events, I've mentioned it, you know, before that uh, injuries have had, you know, a huge impact in his progress. Uh, before the season started, he had a, a, a knee injury and he was out, you know, for about five months. And when we came back, he was one of the first players to, 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 to have COVID. And so when you feel when you, when you, when you, when you get sick, especially these times of you know COVID, 
you were looking at another, you know, two two weeks on the sidelines, not even training. So that is really it. Really hampered his, you know, his progress. Uh, but now he's coming back to his full fitness. That's why we're giving him an opportunity to play because he's still our player, and we know what he can do. We want to try and you know help him to get to his best. And I think uh, he's getting there slowly but surely because it does take time. And uh, we just hope that uh, with the last 18 games, he will get an opportunity to, to play more uh, and show you know what he can do because we will give him that opportunity. We will try and help him you know to rediscover his, 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 his form. We'll go to Tiseto and then Karabo. Thank you very much. Uh, coach, uh, I mean, how are you planning to beat Orlando Perez? I mean, I ask this question in the context of, you know, if you to stay uh, with the chasing pack, if you look at the top five, you haven't really managed to beat any of the guys. How, is it, how, how important is it to, to, to beat Perez and also open a, 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 some considerable gap between yourself and Solos? Yeah, you know, look, uh, uh... It's not just pirates. I think uh, it's always important, you know, for us to win our matches, especially home matches. And we know that pirates are a very good team. They've been doing well, uh, and they've been pushing, you know, to try and get up the uh, uh, the, the log. And so they also want to win this game. So it's always important for us to go out there with the right frame of mind and prepare very very well and make sure that we attack them from the way to go because we are playing at home and probably get an early goal uh, to try and uh, settle them. Uh, but uh, it's going to you know, be a very demanding game where we need to bring our, you know, you know, you know, our A game in terms of our work ethic because that's where it starts. A uh, good work ethic, you know, probably, you know, definitely get us through. Bravo, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, uh, coach, I, I just also want to focus a bit on our job uh, uh, on continental football because at the rate that you're going in, uh, it looks like you will be playing continental football again. A couple of seasons ago, you guys lost out in the semi final. Uh, coach, let, let's be honest. I mean, Champions League football or Cap Country is Cup. It's not only about what happens on the pitch. You've got to be mentally stronger for that. You've got to have a close family like affair within the players and the club. Do you think that you guys are now mentally stronger, although that you've got young players, more young players in the squad? Do you think uh, mentally you're much more stronger? And uh, secondly, coach on Jamie Weber, it looks like he's starting to become, you know, in a place of his own. It looks like he's a part and parcel of the club. Uh, he's playing more. How, how happy are you with this progress, with this short progress that he's been making this season? Thank you. Yeah, look, uh, Jamie. Uh, I'm quite happy with his progress at the moment because I think he's starting to be a 90-minute player, playing consistently, uh, which is what I've been always been demanding from him. You know, to be a little bit more, you know, consistent. You know, in terms of his performances. So there is, you know, progress. Although I feel that he can still give us more, he can still offer us more in terms of now, you know, the creativity and uh, scoring goals because he's one of the players who, who's got the best technique, shooting technique, and he's quite an intelligent player, but just needs to work on his consistency in, in matches, you know, and I think he's getting there slowly. Uh, and, and hopefully, I think he should be able to play consistently in being in the starting lineup, giving us, you know, 90 minutes performances. Uh, coming into continental football, I think most of our youngsters, if I look back when we started, you know, the journey uh, playing in Confederations Cup, that's where players like uh, Sipombule, uh, Teboho Mkwena, you know, started the journey, you know, with, with us. I remember Teboho made his debut uh, when we played El Shanti in, in, in Sudan. And since then, he never looked back. And we gave a lot of our opportunity, uh, our, 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 a lot of our youngsters an opportunity to play. I remember as well, uh, Sipombole scored, you know, a cracker against uh, TP Mazembe in uh, in Lubumbashi. So it helps, you know, to toughen up our our young players because that's the stage which we want, you know, to try and prepare them. Uh, 
you know, both physically and mentally. You know, because sometimes in Africa, when you play continental football, it's always about the mental part. You've got to be stronger. Uh, and it's even worse now, uh, during COVID, where there are a lot of, you know, you know, tactics being used by the other teams. So we would want our young players to go into that environment. That's why we are always pushing, you know, to play continental football, because we want to give our young players uh, that opportunity to play uh, in those environments and it will be part of their development and I think it will help them a lot. Kevin, is that a new hand? Alright. Okay, go ahead. There's a new hand. Uh, coach, just to look at, you know, your previous match against all the Pirates, uh, you scored first but eventually ended up uh, losing the match. And just looking at, you know, some of the matches that you played where you've scored first, in most matches, you go on to either draw or win that match. How are you going to, you know, take this challenge facing on the Pirates on Wednesday to make sure that you score first and try and maintain, you know, the momentum and try and get another goal so that they don't come back? And also, another question, uh, you know, Coach, when, when, when it comes to plays, you know, some of them, when it takes time without playing, you know, their morale goes down and stuff like that. I'm saying this looking at, you know, your goalkeeping situation. I mean, Bronwyn has been very great. Imagine playing 100 consecutive games and then you have the likes of Wally Fakule on the bench and you have George Chikov on the bench. How do you motivate them to stay focused as much as, you know, uh, 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 they, they have to understand that, you know, the captain is doing very well and, and is doing all he can to make sure that the team succeeds? Yeah, and, and uh, another good question. I think uh, it's always difficult uh, to try and manage that uh, because the goalkeeping position is a very lonely position. And when a goalkeeper is doing well, you don't want to try and temper with that. And I think goalkeepers also do understand that. And if they work well, you know, together, and they support each other, uh, knowing that if you get an opportunity to play, you must always be ready. And if you look at Ron, when he has always been, you know, our number one and he's done well, and there's no reason, you know, not to play him, uh, because he's doing well and we build our team around him. Uh, he's one of the, you know, cornerstones of our defence. And we don't want to change that, you know, all the time. But it's also good to give opportunities, you know, to the other goalkeepers, you know, for them, you know, you know, to motivate them and keep encouraging them. But they know that when the time arrives, when the opportunity comes, they always have to be, you know, ready. So they are always training, you know, well, uh, always supporting each other. And that's what you need. We'll take and the other, the other question, I think, you, you spoke about uh... yeah yeah good. Uh, the other question i was speaking about uh looking at how you played against all the pirates in the previous oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. encounter yeah. and also you you scored first in that match but to the end you eventually lost that match uh, but if you look at most of the matches that you played and you've scored first you never lost most of them you've gone on to win or either draw but looking at that match what is it that you're going to do differently to make sure that you come out with a win? We know scoring first is always important for any team. So how are you planning on, on, on tackling this match this time around? Uh, look, I think uh, against Pirates, I think I can also remember the game in the bubble. Uh, where they scored first, we came back. Uh, and, and they scored. And we got about two penalties, but we still missed them. And the... The, 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 the last game in the, in the first round, they, we scored first and they come back and we couldn't just see through the game. Uh, we gave away a goal which we could have done better, you know, in terms of communication, in terms of awareness and decision making. So it's also about managing the game better, you know, especially against a team like Pirates because they are a very good team. Uh, they, they, we need to be a little bit more smart, smarter, especially if we can get an early lead and manage the game a little bit better and not make unnecessary, you know, mistakes, you know, defensively. 
And I think we I think we have learned from our mistakes. I think we can be better. We will do better in that regard. Just good game management. Taking the last three questions, starting off with Timber. Timber? Yeah, no, thank you so much. Um, Coach, um, good morning to you. I just morning wanted to find... Yes, I just, I'm just curious about a young man called Jesse Don. You seem to be nurturing him gradually. Can you please give me an update on him? Where did you find him? How did you discover him? Because he's one of those rare, rare, rare midfielders. I mean, he's a, he's a defensive midfielder and you get to introduce him in games when you, you, your games are probably more stable. Just give us his role in the whole picture. Uh, look, uh, Jesse, uh, I think people are just surprised. <laughs> he's, he's not new, you know, you know, to this stage because uh, we got him from Ubuntu. Uh, I remember when they had a good run uh, in the Netbank Cup. I think they got to the semi-final, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he was in that team and he was playing regularly in the NFD when they were in the NFD before they got relegated. That's where we got him. He made Luke Flores as well. Uh, he's still young. Uh, he's only 20. We got him when he was 17. And we are building him, you know, preparing him gradually to take the role which we call the Dean role because he's got, you know, a very good work ethic. Uh, I think uh, when we played our, the, 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 the previous game against Cape Town City, he came off the bench and he did very well. Just unfortunate that he got injured. I think he could have had another run as well. He got injured in that game, so he's out for that another seven days. But we are happy with his progress. Uh, he's got a future in this club and we're preparing for that. Uh, he says, does that a new hand? All right, Rob, you can go ahead. No, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you, Rob, you can go ahead. Uh, coach, just uh, a little word on the two youngsters who you sent on loan to Turks, Paul Matibula and Aizuna Pallas. Look, uh, we have had other players coming back from injury, uh, like uh, your Julie Manziva, uh, as well as uh, Ivan Zurusike, Ikram Reynas. So we wanted to make sure that uh, Ozunapolis and Puma Tebula will get you know, game time. That's why we took them to tax, because they were not going to get an opportunity to play. So with young players, they need to play regularly. You know, for them to develop. So hence we had taken them to to task to go and try and you know get more game time and and have a feel of the NFD because those guys were playing in the uh, in the in our MDC team, you know, in our reserve team. So since it's, uh, it's an old, we wanted to make sure that they play football, they 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 they, they, they get game time. That's why we took them to tax. Any takers for the last question? Before we close. Excellent. Thank you, members of the media. That concludes our post-match briefing. I will send you the audio as soon as it's ready. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.